The Book of Enoch is one of history's most enigmatic and intriguing ancient religious works, filled with prophecies, revelations, and supernatural accounts involving angels, giants, and even the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Its narrative is so astonishing that many believe it was deliberately excluded from the Bible to prevent the disclosure of mystical and divine secrets that could reveal the future of humanity. But is there any truth to these claims? Did God allow the Book of Enoch to remain hidden for centuries to protect certain mysteries from human knowledge? Today's video will explore these fascinating questions about the Book of Enoch. Before we begin, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and activate the bell to receive all notifications of new content. Now, let's dive into the mysteries surrounding the Book of Enoch. To understand the importance of this book, we first need to know who Enoch was. Let's open the Bible to Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, which say, When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After becoming Methuselah's father, Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Enoch was not an ordinary man. Besides being the great-grandfather of Noah and part of the lineage that would lead to Jesus, he had such an intimate communion with God that he was taken up to heaven without experiencing death, something that also happened to the prophet Elijah. The ancient prophets revered Enoch for his exceptional spirituality, believing he left a legacy as significant as the prophets who came after him. This special communion with God led many people from antiquity to believe that Enoch wrote a book containing prophecies, revelations, and supernatural accounts similar to those of the canonical books of the Old Testament. However, the content of this book is so intense and filled with descriptions that some believe God did not allow it to be included in the Bible to protect humanity from truths that could have been incomprehensible or dangerous at the time. But what exactly does the Book of Enoch say? One of the most intriguing accounts involves events that occurred before the Flood. According to the book, around 200 angels descended from heaven and married the most beautiful women on earth. From this union were born the Nephilim, giants who supposedly inhabited the world until Noah's time. Furthermore, these fallen angels taught their wives the arts of witchcraft and occultism and instructed men in the techniques of forging weapons and shields, as well as the use of roots for medicine. According to the book, this interference in divine creation and the subsequent increase in wickedness and disbelief on earth led God to send a legion of angels to defeat the rebels, exiling them to the darkness. God sent the flood to cleanse the world, sparing only Noah and his family. This narrative has been interpreted by some as evidence of the existence of extraterrestrials, suggesting that the fallen angels described in the Book of Enoch were, in fact, beings from other planets who interacted with humanity. The book also describes Enoch as a celestial traveler who was taken to heaven multiple times to receive divine secrets directly from God. Among the revelations were details about the creation of the world, the coming of the Messiah, and the end of times. Additionally, there are accounts of sermons by Enoch about the apocalypse and astronomical mysteries shown to him by an angel named Uriel. Although many early Christians accepted the Book of Enoch as inspired by God, its mixture of pagan beliefs, especially of Greek and Egyptian origin, led to its gradual rejection. By the 9th century, the book had disappeared from most religious circles, being rediscovered only in 1773 in a church in Ethiopia. Translated and disseminated in Europe, the book once again sparked interest in the West. But should this book have been included in the Bible? And why would God hide a book written by a man he loved so much? 
It's important to note that although the Apostle Jude mentioned Enoch in his letter in the New Testament, he did not cite the Book of Enoch. Jude refers to a prophecy attributed to Enoch, but does not mention a canonical or apocryphal book. If we read Jude's letter carefully, we will see that he mentions Enoch as the seventh from Adam and prophecies the judgment that will come upon the ungodly. However, there is no indication that Jude quoted from any specific book. How did Jude know about this prophecy? If we believe in the divine inspiration of the scriptures, we can understand that the Holy Spirit could have revealed this to Jude without him needing a specific book to know these words. The early Christians were guided by the canonical books inspired by God and recognized by the Holy Spirit as the true word. On the other hand, the Book of Enoch was written long after the events it narrates and contains contradictions with biblical teachings. The biblical Enoch did not write it but probably by someone who, wanting to legitimize their ideas, used the biblical character's name. Furthermore, there is no evidence that the real Enoch left a written record that survived the flood. The Holy Scriptures are filled with proof of their divine inspiration often revealing details of situations that the authors could not have known without God's intervention. For example, in the Gospel of Luke, we read about the righteousness of Zechariah and Elizabeth. But how would Luke know this without divine revelation? And how could he describe Jesus' anguish on the Mount of Olives if Christ was praying alone? Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, do not be misled by those who say that the book of Enoch should have been included in the Bible. The Word of God revealed by the Holy Spirit is sufficient and complete before venturing into apocryphal texts or external sources. Deepen your knowledge of the Bible and know the truth that sets you free. Remember that Christ warned us about the danger of straying from the truth. If you truly want to understand the content of these apocryphal books, start by thoroughly knowing the Word of God. Knowing the truth makes it much easier to identify what is false and what does not come from the Lord. If you found this message valuable, share it with your friends. I'll leave two videos on the selected screen for you. I'm sure they will be a blessing in your life. May God bless you, and I hope to see you in the next video.